Good evening, my name is Rudy, and tonight we're going to discuss basic one. Now, in basic one, we're only going to go through the basics, uh, meaning that we're only going to look at the, the different type of dashboards that you get and also what each and every option on the side is and what they are for. Um, now, on the dashboard, the moment you log, log in, you'll find that you've got the investment dashboard and also you will have a trader dashboard. And for those that, all, that also signed up for the Forex, will also have a Forex dashboard. Now, all three dashboards are more or less the same. There's slight um, changes between each and every one of them, but most of them, or all of them, basically do the same thing. Now, the, on the investment dashboard, you find your account balances. Underneath account balances, uh, uh, you will find a little pie graph of all your accounts, um, but a default account would be, your default account would be your simulation account. So on the on the simulation account, you will start off with 100,000 Rand, okay, to uh, on the demo to, to practice with. On the right-hand side of that, you'll find your profits and losses. This will show you your income, your expenditure, and your profit that you've made so far on your portfolio. Um, and if you've made any losses, obviously your profit would be in red. Then your market values, so market values would show you your market values for all your shares that you've traded. Um, so if I click on simulation, for instance, you'll see that your market values will be empty. But if you have traded um, or invested, then it will show you all your market values for the different shares that you've bought. Underneath that, um, you'll find your accounts. So you can create up and up. I think up to four extra accounts with your simulation account. Um, so you can have a simulation account with a homework account, with a test account, with an account with your name or account with your bank's name. Um, so you can have different accounts which you can practice on. Remember, they they will always be demo accounts. All right. So there's no no live trading or live investing on the software. The software is there for educational purposes only, and also for research purpose research purposes. Um, so underneath accounts, it will give you account name, the market balance, the cash balance, investment value, and then the total brokerage cost that you've that you've paid in brokerage, and then your growth and losses. So if you were if you were in a loss, it would obviously show you a red number instead of a green number. If you're in, if you're in profit, it will give you green. And then your investment summary. Um, so if, if for instance, if I click on simulation, it'll give you investment summary for simulation. So you always start off with a blank page. If you have invested before, it will look something like this. So we'll give you an investment summary for, for the stock picks, for instance, with the code for the share, the quantity that I've bought, the unit cost, total costs, the current price of the share, the current value, what my shares are currently worth towards what the total cost was, Today's movement in cents, so it, over here you need to ignore all the decimals, so the decimals need to fall away. So that's for instance, 5 Rand 56, 8, 1 Rand 81, 54 Rand 79, uh, 6 Rand 6 cents, 30 cents, and so and so forth. Okay, overall move, so this is in Rand value, so 321 Rand 7 cents, 600, uh, 646 Rand 60 cents, and so forth. And then overall move percentage. So this is the percentage movement that, that I've made so far on the stock picks page. And then the action right next to it, where you will be able to go and set up your stop losses, view a small graph, or even sell your shares from here. So all of that, all of those types of things, we will go through in Share Track and Basic Two. We I'll show you how to buy a share, how to analyze a share, and also how to get go and set up your stop losses, and also how to sell a share. The trader dashboard looks more or less the same. So we'll get the same interface um, and. The only difference between the two is you'll have a margin. All right, so in Share Track and Share Track and Basic Three, I'll show how margins and leverages work, and also um, how your directions work, your longs and your shorts. So that's basically the only difference between the two pages is that you, on on the trade dashboard you trade your CVDs, and on the investment dashboard that's where you basically do your investments. Underneath analysis, right at the top, you'll get your uh, your world market indicators, basically um, with a little small work world market view showing you um, some of the world markets like your DAX and your Dow Jones and um, your your Chinese market, international markets, on, and all of those. On the right hand side, you'll find your resources like your commodities, um, like Brent crude oil, gold, golden rand per kilogram, gold. Uh, that's um, yeah, so it's in rand and in dollar, your palladium, platinum, and then your silver. Um, so these aren't tradable on the software itself. So this only shows you what its current, what the current price is. 
Um, so for instance, like the Brain crude oil um, that, it, that is in dollar, um, so it's currently $123.03 um, per Brain crude oil barrel. Um, and then on the right-hand side, we'll show you if the movement was positive or negative, or if there was no movement at all um, on those um, commodities. Underneath that, we've got the currencies. So the currencies for for those who have the forex uh, and has signed up for the forex, these are tradable on the forex. But for those who don't, you will not have the open and close or open position tab available. So it will give you the name um, of the currency. So Aussie dollar versus the rand, euro euro versus the US dollar, euro versus the rand, um, Great British pound versus the US dollar and so forth right to the bottom to US dollar versus Rand. So obviously what we're gonna look at is the one at the bottom, US dollar versus Rand. Um, so even though if you're not trading Forex, this is still important um, because the Rand dollar does influence things like brain crude oil and also uh, things like gold or any other commodities, um, the Rand dollar exchange will um, affect those. It will give the price movement the last modified date, uh, which is today, the movement, if it was a loss or a growth. Um, if it's a growth, it means that, for instance, the rand has weakened against the dollar. If it is a loss, then it means that the dollar has weakened against the rand. Below that, you'll find your world market, uh, or, sorry, your market um, indicators. So this is basically uh, your world market indicators. Um, so your international markets, fr your France markets, uh, German markets, Chinese markets, Japanese markets, uh, and then your South African markets. So once again, this is the main one we're going to focus on uh, because we're trading in, um, nationally and not internationally. So we're only trading within South African borders. Um, so any other stocks, for instance, like um, hedge stocks, those also count within the South African borders uh, because they are also traded, for instance, in the UK and the US and places like that. But we can see here, that the um, J203, the, the overall um, index has gone down um, with 1,438 points um, and a percentage change of uh, minus 1.92. So it means that the, the South African um, market has gone down for today. Um, next, we get the, the stock movement view. Now the stock movement view right at the top, um, you'll see that it says markets are closed. Um, so during the day, what it will give you is like a, um, a market sentiment which would show you if the markets are, are more bullish or more bearish um, so it means that the the stock market stock markets are more up or down okay so if it's more green um, then it means that the, the markets are more bullish if it's more red then it means that the markets are more bearish um, below that we find the top 40 blue chip shares that so these are the the more um, name brand if you, if we can call it like that JSE shares uh, for instance uh, BHG, if we click on BHG, it will show you BHP Group Limited. Um, if we go to the next one, PRX, this is Process, Process NV. So each one of these stocks you can go and click on, okay? And it will show, give you the, the code for the company, the price which is currently trading at, and the percentage movement uh, which it's made for today. So we'll see that most of these shares are down. So the stock market markets has gone down um, a bit for today. And we can also see that on the J203 that the markets have gone down. Um, so if you want more information on, on all of these shares and don't know what the name is, all you do is just click on a share and it will give you the, the name of the company, a little bit of information on the company, um, and then also on the left hand side, your directors dealings, the dividends that's been traded on those shares, or on the share, um, the financials, market news, the details. So this is really important, the details for the company for the day, um, because right at the bottom it gives you a trade, uh, latest traded uh, trading values with the opening price, the highest price, the lowest price, the last price that is traded at, and then the volume that it's traded, um, and then obviously the amount of deals. So a really important thing is. Um, the volume that that a share has traded for the day usually wants a share to trade a volume volume of more than a hundred thousand per day, and not something like a thousand or a hundred or two hundred. You want it to be more than a hundred thousand uh, per day. Um, the deals don't really matter as long as your volume is really high, um, because it means that there's there's more people basically trading on those shares. And you'll usually find with your top 40 blue chip shares that these ones are the ones that's got the highest volume usually on the markets, okay? Because um, they are, so to say, the name brands out there. 
Then your top 10 volume. So this is the top 10 volume for the month so far. So this is not for the day. So once again, volume is really important. But the higher this volume is, the higher the more people have traded with these companies. Um, so you'll find, like for instance, Sabanya Stillwater, First Rand, um, REF, Old Mutual, um, Compania Financial Enrichment. So these are the ones that's been doing quite good for the last month. So this is basically excluding your public holidays and your weekends. Um, so this is only for the last 22 to, to 22 to 24 trading or investing days. Next, you'll find your top 10 best performers and top 10 worst performers. So this will give you the top 10 best performers for the current uh, trading day and also the worst performers for the current trading day. Um, so it also doesn't mean because it's on the base of the worst performers that it's the best shares on the market or the worst shares on the markets. This is just the best and the worst traders or investing opportunities for the day. Then next we'll find the price earnings average. So this is basically an average um, earnings in cents um, per sector. So we'll see that the price earning average for basic materials is six rand, uh, six rand um, eighty-seven. The consumer discretionary is five rand sixty-three, um, and so forth. Okay. So basically, the higher the the price earnings average is, the higher the the earnings are within those sectors. So the lower it is, the the lower your earnings is, the higher it is, the higher your earnings will be. So you'll see that your financials will always have the stronger earnings between all of them, where your basic materials will have the second best. Um, those are everything like, for instance, your Exaro and your Sabanya and your gold shares and stuff like that will, will fall underneath basic materials and financials with all your banking uh, banking shares and collection, collection agencies and stuff like that would be underneath your financials. Next, we'll find the top 10 shares bought by clients. So this is a list of shares that our clients prefer to trade with. So this is only the top 10. So the most favoritable shares um, that clients tend, tend to trade or invest onto um, will show up on the top 10 shares bought by clients with the percentage movement that they've made for the day. Then your stronger stocks percentage above and percentage below 200 day moving average. Now this I'm quickly going to go to the chart to quickly show you exactly how the 200 day moving average works. So you're going to understand the concept of the 200 day moving average first before we go and look at the stocks on it. So we're going to head to charts IQ on the left hand side. So on charts IQ, just going to remove all the unnecessary charts for now and then I'm just going to show you how to add that to one day. So you'll find a blank page basically the moment you go to your your um, to your chart IQ. Um, so to add the two one day moving average line, we're going to go to studies, go to moving average, and then change the period from 50 to 200, and then we say create. Then it's going to add this two hundred day moving average line, which will go straight through your chart. Now, the 200-day moving average line basically only gives you an average price on the right-hand side, the average price for the last 200 days. Um, so it takes um, 200 days worth of information, um, calculates them all together, and divides it by 200 to give you an average. And then that will plot each and every day. It will plot a, a, a small little piece um, onto the chart. Now, how the, what you basically want from the 200-day moving average is, is that your shares that you want to invest or trade onto, that it's always above your 200-day moving average line. Because you don't want a share that's below this line, um, which is trading in a in a overall downward trend. You will always want your share to be in an upward trend, mostly in an upward trend with falls in between, because obviously you don't want a share that's always going up, or else you'll find a share that's basically a straight line directly up. So you don't want that. You want a share to go up and down by all at, at all times. Um, so there must be falls in the markets and growth in the markets. So especially for traders, a trader would want a fall and a growth. And investor would always want growth. Okay, with falls in between, because it means that you can buy it at a lower price, especially for new investors. Um, so we want the share to be above this line, but not too high above this line, all right? Because the higher the, the price is above this line, it means that, that the chances of the share dropping is much higher than what a share is close, closer to the line. For instance, if we look at the J203, which was really close to the line in this part here, it, um, 
it had a good movement but now it's basically overextended which means that the, that the markets need to come back down again for investors to be able to get back into the markets obviously there's a few other other um things out there that's influencing the the stock market currently like for instance the U the ukraine russia incident which is negatively influencing the market currently um but i mean you can see that the markets are still doing good even though within february we had a bit of a drop the share market did shoot up but that now it's coming back down which is a good thing because it means that we can buy the shares at a cheaper price we essentially wanted to get closer to the 200 day moving average line Okay, so we can buy it as cheap as possible and sell it as high as possible. So if a share is below it, obviously you, um, you're going to stay away from it for now up until the point that it comes back up, crosses through the 200-day moving average line, then you can look at investing again. So you can take obviously take a chance in this area over here. Um, we can see that there was growth, but you never know what would have happened in this PCA. It could have just bounced back on it and came back down. So you want your share to, to basically go back up, cross through the line and trade in a upwards trend or a bullish trend. So basically how it works is the strongest stocks above 200 day moving average will show you all the stocks that's currently way above that 200 day moving average. Now we'll see obviously because of what's happening now currently in Ukraine, which is most of our commodities are above um, that line. Um, so we'll, we'll have gold fields, South 32 Limited, Anglo Gold, um, Royal Buffett, Kemp Platinum. So those are all um, commodities. Um, we've got Sassel with the Brent Crude Oil. We've got our gold shares, which are currently above those shares. So most of your um, commodities would be, or your resources would be above that 200 day moving average line. Now, what we don't want is something like a 53% above that line. It means that it's way too high above the line. It needs to come back down before we can invest into it. But if I look at, for instance, a share like Standard Bank right at the bottom, this would be a, a better opportunity than what a share is above the line, okay, which is way, uh, which is way too high. 17% um, is still a, a bit of a risk. Um, so you've still got the potential for the share to grow. Um, but it won't grow that much for you to make, let's say, um, let's say 20 to 40 percent growth w with the share. Um, so it all depends on what, obviously, what the markets do. So there is potential, maybe for Standard Bank to even go to the top to 53 percent, so make that extra 40 percent on it. Um, but 17 percent is uh, um, a bit too high as well. You want it just to break through that line and uh, and go up, or be around about about five percent and then invest into it. Okay, then your your weakest stocks below 200 day moving average. So these are obviously the share that shares that are below the um, that line. So process and Nasdaq has been below the line for a while now. Um, both of them are, are um, heading down rapidly. Um, so these are shares obviously <clears throat> that you want, don't want to invest into now currently because the weight uh, they're basically too low to go invest onto. So the same thing with the strongest stocks percentage above 200 day moving average. You want the shares that, that's at the bottom of the list because obviously they are closer to the 200 day moving average and, and they've got a better chance to break through that 200 day moving average line um, so that you can start making profit. Then your post, your next is your po uh, positive share sector movement and your negative share sector movement. So this is more or less the same as your best performers and, and your worst performers. This is only within the sectors. So in basic materials, for instance, UCP um, on 15 cents has made a 7.14% growth within basic materials. Consumer discretionary ITE uh, on a price of 15 Rand 11 has made a, a percentage growth within uh, within that sector of 2.79%. So, so this is within that sector the percentage movement that 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 those share that that share has made. Okay, um, and then your negative share sector movement the same thing, but this is only the, the shares that has made negative growth um, within those sectors like KBO um, on six cents. Um, has gone down by 14.4, 14 14.29%. Then Satrix. So Satrix um, is tradable or, or investable on the software. Um, so you can basically, uh, you can, for instance, go to the share, click on the share, go to charts IQ and do um, analysis on it and buy shares on them. So basically what these are, these are groupings of shares, for instance, like STX 40 is such a, is a such a top 40. So that is your top 40 blue chip shares. 
so it's the grouping of all those shares together uh, and they give it to you at a certain price okay so you're basically trading with the entirety of the top 40 blue chip shares or fin for financials or ind for in your for your industrials so that's your um i think that would usually be your top 15 uh, financials and your top 10 industrials uh, which you'll be able to invest into so grouping of those shares okay or companies that you'll be able to invest onto um so you can trade trade with them or invest with them on the software and go and do some an analysis on them but with the etfs exchange traded funds you can only invest onto them you can't go and do any charting on them the charting i think on these will be blank if you click on them and go to charts iq your charting will always have one candle so there will be no um candles uh, or charting for these okay uh, because we don't really um teach you how to how to trade or invest into exchange traded funds um you um you'll ba basically have to use a third party application to go and um see what what the charting looks like for instance investing.com they have got really good charting on um etfs which you'll be able to go uh, and do analysis on and then come back to the software and buy them on your or practice with them okay so same thing these are groupings of shares like for instance it's a the stx 40 is also available on this and you'll also find like for instance the c top 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 50 the canadian top 50 you'll find the chinese top 500 uh you'll find that the etf um the the 500 so this is basically all your etfs with one um that you'll be able to invest into but the percentage movements on these are really small so you want to find big performances on these year and day you'll find a share that grows by two percent or five percent but never like over the top growth or over the top um shares that go down um so so it's smaller movements that um you'll find on these and these you can only trade or invest onto when you have a tax-free investing account now most uh, so these days most um investing companies and trading companies give you a free um etf account exchange traded fund account and it's also a tax-free account and so you won't you won't pay any um, taxes on those account but you are limited to around about thirty thousand to thirty five thousand annually which you'll be able to put into those accounts and about five hundred thousand rand lifetime which you'll be able to put into those accounts so they're really limiting you to um, how much money you can put in and also limit you to how much profit you can make within um, a few years um, then you'll find the winning shares list on the left hand side. This, so this is um, our guru's um, winning shares list um, and also her watch lists. So her name is Moshima Gama. She's currently um, one of the, the best um, investors um, and traders in South Africa. Um, so I think she's currently in second or third place um, and she's currently gunning for first. So these are all her, um, all her shares on her watch list. So she's got, for instance, on the Guru's watch list, Remgro, Standard Bank, APSA, Famous Brands, Soho Sun, um, Jubilee. Um, and then she's also got the Pan Africa Resource PLC. So this is all the shares and she'll basically tell you to go long on most of these, go long with the targets at the bottom. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so you'll be able to invest into her recommendations as well on her watch lists and then latest performers on the right hand side which is on a winning shares list eoh at the top um eoh holdings with a movement of 12 percent then vikeli property fund with a movement of seven percent a first round 6.9 percent and, and so forth and at the bottom here um she's got a few shares obviously now with um with what's what's happening in the world you'll see that she has recommended a few um good um industrial shares uh like, like spencer sabania gld goldfields sasol and dr uh, drd gold limited so these are the ones that she's currently recommending with the price that she's added on the latest price the percentage gain the date added and then the, if it obviously if it's made a gain or a loss so we'll see obviously some of the shares went down with what's currently happening in the world um, so the charts IQ um, and the chart tool, charting tools will and the charting tool will go through um, in session two, um, which is on Friday. 
and then your heat map it basically just gives you a heat map of the best shares right at the bottom which is the green one like lbh is your best performing share so far for today so it's 32 percent that the share has gone up if we go down with the list your worst performer would be right at the bottom so scd um, fell with 14.44 percent for the day so the greener the shares get the better they have done on the market and the red the more red they get um, the the worse they've gone um, then your positive growth this is um, your positive growers for the day so same thing the more green it is the better it's done but because of lbh having such a high percentage growth for the day most of your shares uh, would be red okay because lbh has gone up with 32 percent so so the rest would be red but doesn't mean that the red that they're really bad it's just that lbh has overperformed on the market for today then your negative growth these will give you a negative growers so you'll see that um, SCD is in, most in red, which EMI hasn't fell by, by that much, um, but so it would be your most green one. So this is your um, your negative your negative growers. So basically, the shares has gone down. Then your top 40. So top, top 40 is a bit more scrambled, so it's not sorted. Um, so it's a bit more scrambled. Um, so it will show you obviously same thing. The more green it is, the better it's done for the day. And the more red it is, the worse, uh, the, the uh, more it's gone down for, for the day. And then your watch list. So basically your personal watch list. So anything you've put on the watch will also give you the, obviously your best shares at the bottom with your worst shares um, at the bottom. Oh, sorry, your best shares at the top and your worst shares at the bottom. Um, then your, your the stocks page. So this will go through in um, basic two. We will go and filter out shares and also go and um, analyze the, the shares and go and buy them and sell them and show how to set up stop, lo stop losses. Um, and then the golden goose will go through in a golden goose video. Um, your calculators, like your investment calculator, same thing, we'll go through that so we'll, we'll, one, uh, once we go through basic two. Investment, uh, and then next thing we're gonna go through quickly is the financial independence calculator. Now the financial independence calculator basically calculates how long you will you take to reach financial independence uh, with your um, current salary and also what return you expect on the market. Okay, so if you have, let's say for instance, you have a monthly salary of 10,000 Rand per month with inflation rates, so so you, your yearly increase will run about here by 6%. Uh, capital you have saved, so the amount you have saved so far, um, your savings rate, what percentage of your salary are you willing to put aside? Um, so let's say it's 10%, 1,000 Rand per month, and then your return on your capital um, so that's everything basically all your percentage that you are, are expecting to gain in your investment so let's say 40 percent um, per year and then we say calculate and that will calculate and tell you that you will reach your first level of, of financial independence after seven years and six months um, so if we go down at the bottom we'll see that what, what our return would be um, after that, that seven years and six months. Now then basically your salary um, is being replaced by investments. So obviously this would come a little bit more down the more your salary is and the more you have saved, um, then that uh, those years would come down. But if you are trading, then obviously you can half that or, or make it um, even less like two years or one year. To reach financial independence basically to replace your salary um, with investing or trading okay so investing will take you a little bit more longer um, but trading um, might substantially bring that amount down then education underneath education you'll find your lecture modules now underneath lecture modules you'll find stuff like your motivation planning to be rich buying and selling shares some basic ideas types of shares and so forth so right you'll see that there's 20 um, underneath introductory, you've got about you've got nine on uh, technical, you've got six on um, modules on on fundamentals and three on economics. So these each one of these, if you go to on the right hand side, you'll see that you've got a button there which is more. If you click on more, it's going to give you um, the entire module. So you, you work yourself through the module and all of these in between, all of these red words 
if you don't understand what a word means, you can always go and click on it because sometimes it's it's really um, good to go and understand what those words or terms mean um, while you're reading through the module so that when you write the test that you're not um, totally lost. So you, you need to go and write the exams on these as well. So each one of these you can click on more and they will have videos in between that you can also go and watch um, which there is some questions uh, that they've taken out uh, for you to go and write the exams. So on the right hand side you'll see that you've got your Forex lecture modules as well for those that have the Forex and so you'll you can go and do, do those and also write the exams for the Forex. Um, but underneath exams you'll see that you're going to select your category so introductory go to your motivation and then say start exam or whichever one you've done start exam and then it's a monkey puzzle uh, that you, exam that you're going to do so you go through them select your answers this is basically why i'm mostly failing all mine um, and then finish all right this one we've passed now okay so the previous one we failed because you i usually just randomize the the questions for the webinars so this one we've passed now if you haven't passed it obviously we'll tell you that you failed and the pass mark is 50 percent okay so if you've got 50 percent on them um then you'll pass pass it if you've got zero um or two um or even one then it will fail uh, fail you on on it then you need to go and do it again okay so these are um, things that you need to do. It's part of the T's and C's. So if you go read through your T's and C's, that then you'll see that it is recommended for clients to go through your lecture modules and write the exams, um, so that you can little, learn a little bit more about how the market wor works and what type of shares there is, how to do um, more advanced um, technical analysis, um, how does basically, for instance, how your moving averages works and stuff like that. Um, Next, you'll find the gloss. Oh, sorry, the webinars. Now, underneath the webinars, uh, you'll see that the, that all the webinars which which are included in your lecture modules is already listed underneath Share Tracker webinars. So you can go through the Share Tracker webinars before you even touch the uh, the exams. But I would recommend working through the lecture modules and watching the videos as you go along with the lecture modules. Then your live webinar archive. So all our um, videos, all our share track and basic one, basic two, basic three. Uh, so all the basic webinars are available over here, and also uh, the webinars that Mox does. So uh, Moshima Gama and Hendrik the Yahar also does videos. Um, so all the videos will also be, a, a, be be available for you guys to go and view. If you miss any webinars, you can always come back to the live webinar archive and go and watch them there. Then your share track and tubes. So these are a little bit more advanced videos. For instance, your accounting period, your balance of payments, equity. What is equity? How does the equity work? Your dependents, candlesticks, financial year, and also your earnings per share. So things that are really important, for instance, in the beginning is like your candlesticks, um, because you need to understand how the candlesticks work to be able to read your charting. If you don't like candlesticks, you can always use uh, normal line charting, but candlesticks are really nice to work with. So these videos. Um, we learn a little bit more about how um, that certain things work on the market. Then your webinar bookings. If you want to make a webinar booking and you didn't receive any email on any uh, webinars, uh, you just go to the webinar booking, select your year, select your month, and then click on go. And it will give you all the webinars uh, which you can go and book. Okay, so at the bottom, obviously, you'll find the latest ones. And then as you go up the list, it will give you the ones which is later uh, during the month. Okay, glossary is your dictionary to the JSC. So any words or terms that you don't understand on the JSC, you can come and pull up here. For instance, if you don't understand what abandon means, click on abandon, and it will give you the exact same thing that it gave you on the lecture modules. So it'll give you a little bit of it will give you a definition with a little bit of a description on on what that word means. If you if you don't want to go through each and every one and search for the word, what you can do is just click on search, type in your word, abandon, and click on it, and it'll give you the same thing. Okay. So any words or terms that you don't understand in the um, on the on the software or in the JSC, you can come and search up. So this is your dictionary to the JSC. Next is our um, news and information. So underneath market news, this page usually takes a while to load. 
but we can click, quickly go and click on it. So this will give you um, information on basically news which has happened during the day. So for instance, right at the at the top, it'll show us implants cut, PG, uh, cut PGM forecasts um, owing to refined inventory build. Um, so it will give you a little bit of news uh, news bulletin on that. Um, and this is sources from, for instance, Bids Community, SA Shares, uh, South Coast um, Herald, um, MoneyWeb, Studies, um, Study Securities. So it's it's a whole few or a bunch of um, news bulletins that we're pulling from all over, which pulls into the software. Uh, and this is, is really important to, to focus on your fundamentals as well. So this shows you all your fundamental news. So you no, don't need to go and uh, Google anything or um, buy any newspapers this is basically your daily, daily newspaper um, on the JSC and even um, some markets overseas as well okay then next to that you'll find your sense news so same thing that will also update um, during the course of the day it just takes a while to load because it's a lot of information to pull through um, but this is as I said this is where you're going to find most of your fundamental research is underneath your market news then your market information, this will give you um, your listed companies. So it will give you the code for the company, the, uh, the company name, the sector and uh, and subsectors which it's trading in, the link for their websites, and then it also tells you if those shares are currently suspended or active. So a suspended share, you, for instance, you won't be able to trade or invest onto because those companies are suspended. Um, but some of them has um, have relisted, like for instance, ABL is now AXL, um, so that uh, AXL is currently active, which ABL, the previous uh, code, is suspended. Now, the, obviously, there are some reasons behind why shares have been suspended and why they have relisted, like APSA, for instance, this, uh, was ASA at some stage, and then they got suspended because they traded with um, with another company, then they uh, delisted from that company and relisted as ABG. Um, so some companies will suspend because they they've got new codes, and some of them um, will will relist because they have new codes which they are trading under. Like BH, BHP Billiton uh, is is now not no longer BH, BHP; it's now BHG. So BHP is suspended. So everyone needs to trade on BHG now. Okay, as an example, JSC index reference. So this is all the index references. For instance, if you want to know uh, what the JSC all she index code is, that is obviously the J203. But if you want to know what the top 40 is, that's the J200. If you want to know what your financial and industrial codes are, that's the J211 or the J212. And you can go and click on them and so, so same thing, just click on them, go to charts IQ, and you can view the chart for those um, those indexes. Then your list of stockbrokers. So for these that want to start investing and or start trading, um, there is a list of stockbrokers that you can use. Like for instance, Easy Equities, which you'll only use for investing or trading ETFs on. SPG Securities, where you can do both. You can trade and invest. You can do CVDs and equities. Um, you'll find FMB. You'll find APSA, a net bank. So there's so you can decide on where you want to invest or trade. Okay. So um, what I would usually, usually, usually recommend is that you, if you are only an investor, then I would recommend you going through easy equities only instead of going to Standard Bank, which has high costs on their, um, on their brokerages and also high costs on their uh, monthly fees, where easy equities have no uh, monthly fees and they've got really low brokerages. If you only want to trade, then you go through IG markets, for instance, IG.com, and then you open yourself an account there because once again, brokerage is really low and there's no monthly cost. But if you want to do both, then uh, we would recommend going through Standard Bank because then you can trade and invest at the same time. And also a nice thing about Standard Bank is that you've got your stop losses and your notifications and everything that you can set up on Standard Bank, which um, easy equities don't have. You can't set up any stop losses or any notifications. You can only buy and sell. So there's a lot of pros and cons towards each and every um, stockbroker. Um, but 
as I said, Rick, they, um, it all depends on what you want to do. Even if you want to say, okay, let me skip all the um, the monthly fees, then open one easy equ equities account and one IG account because I want to trade and invest. So it all depends on what you want to do on the market. Okay. So that's the basics of the software. Um, so that's only all the tools and things that you can use. So as I said, um, Friday night, Friday evening, we're going to go through um, ShareTrack and Basic 2, which we're going to do um, some filtering um, and also some, some technical analysis on the charting. We're going to buy some shares, sell some shares, and set up um, notifications on those shares. If you've got any questions on the webinar, you're more than welcome to go to um, our need support. Send through an ask question, send through a ticket to us so we can get back to you, or you can even give us a call underneath contact us. There's all our contact details uh, with our head office phone number and our 324 hour support numbers. Uh, if you want to get in, get in, uh, get in touch with me directly, um, you're more than welcome to send me an email to, to rudy at sharetracking.com or phone the head office number and they can put you directly through to us. Okay, so I'll see you guys on Friday evening then. We will, we, we will discuss SharetrackingBasic 2.